one of my previous videos uh, for which I will leave the link here. We already talked about fully developed laminar flow, especially head loss for a fully developed laminar flow. Um, but now that we have looked at the fully developed turbulent flow and we understand that most flows within uh, different piping systems are primarily turbulent flows, that is why we need to develop the head loss expression for not just the laminar flow but for turbulent flow as well. And that is why it's uh, important to understand uh, what are the components of head loss. So for example in a piping system it's not necessary that the piping system would consist only of straight pipes. It could have bends in here, there could be different uh, elbow fittings uh, because of the bends, there could be uh, different valves in here. Okay, So because these different components exist here so that is why it's important to understand head loss the overall head loss this is the overall head loss and this overall head loss is made up of, uh, of two factors the first is the major loss which is because of the losses within the straight part of the pipe within this part of the pipe and then we have the minor head loss that is because of um, the pipe components in here, for example, the elbows or uh, the valves in here. So the major loss is dependent on the straight pipe um, system, and the minor loss is dependent on the other, all the other components. An important distinction to remember here is that the major and minor here do not represent that this is more important than this one okay it just only means that uh, the major loss is indicating losses within straight pipes minor losses indicate uh, losses within pipe components in a lot of applications especially uh, where we have a piping system that has a lot of components in there and uh, not that much of a length of a straight pipe the minor head losses are relatively a lot higher than the major head losses okay so major and minor doesn't mean that this loss is more important than the minor loss both are equally important in a lot of cases minor head loss is even more important than the major loss but for now we're just going to look at the major losses and if we have a pipe flow here let's say and we wanted to express pressure drop here so if you remember previously we expressed pressure drop in terms of uh, the diameter of the pipe, the average velocity of flow within the pipe, the length of the pipe, and the density of the fluid within the pipe. This is what we did for a fully developed laminar flow. But for a fully developed turbulent flow now, the density becomes an important factor too. And another uh, variable that is of extreme importance is uh, something that we represent by epsilon which gives us a measure of the roughness of the pipe wall how rough this pipe wall is this is indicated by the epsilon symbol here so if pressure drop is a function of these uh, variables then the total number of variables six on this side one on this side so let me indicate total number of variables by k so k is equal to seven and the reference dimensions is going to be equal to three reference dimension is just something uh, that we do in dimensional analysis if you're using the FLT system or the MLT system reference dimensions for our case is three and then k minus r is going to be equal to four and what does the number four represent here that we would need four dimensionless products or dimensionless groups in order to Fully describe the pipe flow here. So let's say those one of the representations of these four dimensionless groups is these is this. This first group here is the dimensionless pressure drop term. We're just dividing the pressure drop by dynamic pressure. The second term here is Reynolds number. Um, the third term here is the length to diameter ratio. 
and the fourth term here is the relative ref roughness factor. Uh, we're going to talk about relative roughness in detail, uh, but let's just move on and write that equation here. I'm just going to explain something here now um, about the roughness factor, about how it varies and why it's important for turbulent flow. So for a turbulent flow, we've already seen that we have three different layers, viscous sublayer, then we have the overlap layer, then we, we have the fully turbulent layer. And we said that viscous sublayer is the most important sublayer because any changes that would occur in the velocity profile within the viscous sublayer, that is going to affect this entire velocity profile moving upwards off the pipe wall. So this is a pipe wall we are looking at. Viscous sublayer is the layer that is right next to the pipe wall. And now, if, let's say, we were looking at um, a pipe that is smooth here, and now viscous sublayer is being indicated by this symbol. So we are looking at this viscous sublayer right next to the pipe. So for a smooth pipe, you could see how the velocity streamlines look like within this viscous sublayer. But if the pipe wall is rough, and it could be microscopically rough, it doesn't have to be rough uh, in a way which would be even uh, visible to the human eye. It could be microscopically rough, and there would be uh, a variation in the velocity profile. So this roughness factor indicates how rough the pipe wall is. For a smooth pipe, you see that the roughness a measure of roughness is a lot smaller for a rougher wall, a rougher pipe wall. This friction, uh, sorry, this roughness factor increases and uh, is higher or larger than the roughness factor for a smooth wall. So this is one of the things that we had to look at. The other thing is that we know experimentally that pressure drop is directly proportional to the length of the pipe. But that is only true, we know this experimentally, but this is only going to be true if this entire term is also directly proportional to this factor, which is over here. So what we do is we have to then write this out over here, and that is how we write it over here. <clears throat> and now what I can do is I can take this term to the other side, multiplied by diameter, divided by length. And so and this is what becomes uh, the term on the left side of the equation. And if I actually go back to one of the previous equations that we had derived with pressure drop in terms of friction factor, then what I would see is that this entire term is actually equal to friction factor, which is F from here. So all I have to do then is I can just plug this in here, up here, and I'm going to have an expression that would give me friction factor here in terms of the Reynolds number and in terms of the relative roughness, which is epsilon by diameter here. So what does that mean? We saw for a fully developed laminar flow that the friction factor is only equal to Reynolds number divided by 64. What this means is that for a fully developed laminar flow, um, it's independent of this term. It's independent of the relative roughness. It's only dependent on the Reynolds number. Whereas for a fully developed turbulent flow now, the friction factor is not only dependent on the Reynolds number, but it's also dependent on the relative roughness factor. Okay. Another thing that we need to do now is we need to apply the energy equation onto uh, our pipe flow. And I'm just going to move these equations up here. And for the same pipe flow, I'm going to write the same energy equation for a horizontal pipe right now. And if the pipe is horizontal, then there's no elevation. That means C1 is equal to Z2. Because the flow is fully developed, that means alpha 1 is going to be equal to alpha 2. 
v1 is going to be equal to v2 because we're saying that for a fully developed flow, the velocity profile at 1 is equal to the velocity profile at 2. The velocity profile does not change. That is why v1 is equal to v2. So these two go out as well. This does not mean that the velocity does, doesn't change at different points. This does not mean that there are fluctuations in the velocity components. But what this means is that the velocity profile at point 1 is equal to velocity profile at point 2, or at section 1 is equal to the velocity profile at section 2. So all that I'm going to be left with now is going to be equal to p1 minus p2 is equal to gamma into head loss term here. And now what I can do is I can just plug in delta p from here and here. And now this head loss term is going to represent it by HL major, and that is going to be equal to uh, this equation in terms of the friction factor. And this is valid for both the horizontal pipe flow and the inclined pipe flow. How is that? Well, if I was going to look at the same equation, this energy equation uh, for, a, for an inclined pipe, then obviously z1 would not be equal to v2 so I would be left with delta p in terms of this term so the pressure uh, changes are taking place because of the elevation change and partly because of the head loss that is associated with the frictional effects and this term is only equal to this one that we already found out so the head loss, the major head loss term, does not change whether the pipe is horizontal or inclined. The major head loss term remains the same. And this equation is called the Darcy Weisbach equation. Uh, it's a very important equation, and uh, based on this, we have the relation between the head loss and the friction factor. Now, it's important to um, basically go ahead and find out a way that we can somehow find out the value for the relative reference uh, the relative re reference factor as a whole and the roughness as a factor too because until now we've only looked at the theory behind it that this is something called roughness but how do we refine uh, or define roughness for different types of pipes so based on experimentation based on uh, finding out results through extensive experiments that have been conducted, uh, we can find out the values for a roughness here, for equivalent roughness here, uh, in the form of tables. So depending on different types of pipes, we would have it. We're going to restrict ourselves to um, basically a roughness factor of up to uh, point zero 0.05 we're going to be talking about uh, relative roughness factor we're just going to restrict ourselves to an, al an, an analysis of pipes for which the relative roughness factor is going to be within this range um, so the roughness here in this table is given in millimeters it's given in feet and I'm talking about millimeters over here right now. Um, so let's just uh, take a look at... Um, so yeah, before I move on further, one thing that I would like to talk about, especially for practical applications, is that this equivalent roughness here is only given here for new clean pipes. So when we're faced with practical problems, especially with applications where, let's say, the pipe systems have been in usage for quite a while, then what happens is that within the pipe, along the pipe wall, uh, there can be a buildup of corrosion, it, there can be a buildup of scaling in here, so the, uh, let's say, so the roughness in here is of a much higher magnitude, so the relative roughness in here, let's say, is going to be of a much higher magnitude as well. 
So we need to be careful about that. Um, that we need to not only be concerned with the equivalent roughness, but also with the relative roughness uh, that changes because the basically the effective diameter here has reduced, right? So if the diameter of the pipe previously was this much, after some usage, this diameter has reduced to, let's say, d dash. And then instead of looking at this, we should be looking at relative roughness in this form for practical applications. Okay. So and the easiest way to basically, because what we are trying to do is we saw that we have been looking at friction factor as a function of the Reynolds number and the relative roughness. So that means that we need to find a way to somehow basically uh, find an expression, find an equation, or somehow graphically relate all of these three terms together. And one of the ways to do this is through something called a Moody chart. And the Moody chart here gives us a good graphical representation of um, the relationship between friction factor, the Reynolds number, and between the relative roughness factor. So for example, let's say if I have a Reynolds number of 20,000, which would be a turbulent flow, so 20,000 is going to be here, 210 to the power of 4, and let's say I'm looking at a pipe um, let's say I'm looking at a concrete pipe and if you go back to the table you will see that for a concrete pipe uh, the roughness is equal to 0.3 until 3 millimeters so let's say I'm just gonna choose the value of uh, roughness here as 0 0.3 and let's say I'm gonna choose the diameter of the pipe as 0.5 meters, but remember that this over here is in millimeters, so I need to convert diameter into millimeters too. So 0.5 meters is going to come out as 500 millimeters. And so this is obviously dimensionless, and this is going to be turning out to be equal to 0 0.0006. Just check that if you will. So 0 0.006 is here. And all I have to do is I have to just draw a horizontal from here. Although this doesn't look like a horizontal, but you'll have to do that yourself. And I'm going to draw a vertical from here. So let's say this is the point that I get to. So from here, all I have to do is I have to just go towards this side and I'll be able to find out the friction factor. Okay. So evidently you would have either uh, the Reynolds number and the relative roughness given to you or the Reynolds number and the friction factor given to you. Two out of these three will be given to you in order for you to be able to find uh, the third one. Um, one important thing to notice here is uh, that you could say that what if my value was somewhere in this region, right? Well, that is not possible because this last curve here is for a smooth pipe. And what we notice is that even for smooth pipes, for smooth pipes for which uh, the roughness is equal to zero, even for smooth pipes, the friction factor is not equal to zero. Okay, why is that? Because when we're talking about smooth pipes, even then, um, head loss occurs in the pipe because of the no-slip condition. What is the no-slip condition? It, it is the condition because of which the fluid starts sticking to the pipe wall, right? So because this fluid is sticking to the pipe wall, uh, that is why there would have to be some kind of microscopic surface roughness in here on the molecular level 
because of which the snow slip behavior is being produced. Uh, those kind of pipes are called hydraulically smooth pipes. And we're saying that the friction factor is not going to be equal to zero for such pipes. So why is this point not possible? So for example, when we start reducing the Reynolds number, right, and you're moving in this direction, um, that means the velocity is uh, decreasing. Because the velocity is decreasing, then that means that the fluid is going to be sticking to the pipe even more on, on the walls. And because of that, this curve starts moving upwards. Why? Because the friction factor has started increasing because more fluid is sticking to the pipe. So there's the friction factor is starting to get bigger now. That is why this is not possible for you to have a uh, have this point. Um, the other thing is that we have this uh, line here, which is called the wholly uh, turbulent flow or the completely turbulent flow, and this exists here because for turbulent flows, uh, for which the Reynolds number are very large, um, well they become independent of the Reynolds number. Um, surface roughness completely dominates the character of the flow near the wall and because of that then the pressure drop required is a result of the turbulent shear stress instead of the laminar shear stress that we were talking about and the risk of subwear. Uh, what else? In this transition region as well we don't really find any values for uh, friction factor in here because this is the transition region um, the flow is random here so for that we cannot account for how the friction factor is changing in here so we could use the Moody chart to find out one of these if we have got the other two given to us but another important equation which is called the Colebrook formula it's uh, based on the Moody chart and it is valid for the entire non-laminar region of the Moody chart. So if we use this equation we could also find out one of the two factors uh, if one of the three factors if the two are given to us. But this is more complex to use because uh, let's say if we were to find the friction factor then the friction factor here is going to we have to find found out in terms of the relative roughness factor in terms of the Reynolds number and in terms of the friction factor here too. That means we have to basically um, expand this equation further, make use of computers, uh, computer codes maybe, or calculators, and only then we can find out um, the value for, let's say, the friction factor. <laughs> we would have to apply some kind of iterative scheme here. So instead of using the Colebrook formula, um, we go with something called the Holland equation, which is another representation for the Colebrook formula, but what's easier about using this formula is that the friction factor now is only in terms of the relative roughness factor and in terms of the Reynolds number. So it's easier to just work it out uh, through your, let's say, calculators. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave you with a problem here um, for a commercial steel pipe we have let's say a diameter here in terms of x it could be let's say um, point well I mean you could take let's say point 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 zero five meters let's say okay and uh, so we have a steel pipe that has a certain diameter and industrial wastewater is flowing through it, so wastewater treatment is taking place. But instead of uh, going with the properties for, for wastewater, we're going to approximate it uh, as water at 30 degrees. And it's going to flow through the pipe with an average velocity that is given to you as well. So you could go ahead and approximate this water at 30 degrees and find out the value for, let's say, the density or the viscosity of the fluid uh, at these conditions in the tables that you must have seen 
So let's say water, and now what you have to do is that you have to go ahead and determine the pressure drop. First of all, use Moody chart, and then try using uh, either one of the two, either the Colebrook formula or the Holland equation. Um, and yeah, that is one way you can practice with uh, this topic of major losses, major head losses in pipe flow.